Hi, and welcome to the video on basics of data analysis and interpretation. As you probably know, data analysis and interpretation is a major part of any scientific investigation and an important life skill. On a daily basis, we utilize data to generate knowledge, and we use that knowledge to take action. In this video, you will look at common representations of data and best practices for analyzing and interpreting that data. To be clear, when we say analyzing, we mean to make sense of the data. When we say interpret, we mean to make meaning of it. In this video, we'll look at five common representations that are shown here. And we'll start with the table. A data table shows the relationship between two or more variables. And it's useful for collecting and organizing data. Most investigations will utilize a data table to collect and organize the data. And the way that that is done is headers or labels or labels are used for the columns, which are the parts of the tables that go up and down, and the rows. This data table does not have headers for the rows, which go across, but it does have headers for the columns. You can use data tables to identify trends and patterns, but it's not as visually as appealing as other representations. So oftentimes the information in a data table is transferred into another representation. The next representation we'll look at is a pie chart. Pie charts show numerical proportions, and that's useful for comparing. So for this example, we have favorite type of movie. We can utilize this pie chart to identify what was the most popular type of movie. The answer for that is the romance movie, and we know that because a larger slice of the pie is dedicated to romance. One downside to a pie chart, though, is you cannot use it to identify patterns if you just have one pie chart. If you have more than one pie chart, you can use those to identify patterns. The next type is a bar graph. There are two bar graphs shown here. The one on the left is a horizontal bar graph because the bars are going in a horizontal fashion. The one on the right is a, is a vertical bar graph because the bars are going in a vertical fashion. Bar graphs show relationship between two or sometimes more variables. They show discrete values. And what I mean by that is, in this example of what kind of pet do you own, five people, which is five being a discrete value, five people own a rabbit. Bar graphs like pie charts are very useful for comparing. For example, if you wanted to know which do people own more, cats or dogs, you can utilize this bar graph to determine that. Right, so more people own cats than dogs, and we know that because the bar here for cats is higher than that for dogs. We can also utilize the values. Seven people own cats, and only three people own dogs. So by comparison, we can answer that question. In addition, you can utilize certain bar graphs to find patterns, like group bar graphs, which show more than one bar graph in the, in the graph, and also the stacked form of bar graph. If we look at the stacked example, which shows expenses by month, we can utilize this bar graph to identify the following pattern. As you notice, each month, the person um, who this bar graph is representing spent more money each month on rent than any other expense. And we know this because a larger portion of each bar is dedicated to rent, which is shown here in that blue, in the light blue. The next representation is a plot. Like bar graphs, plots show relationship between two or sometimes more variables. This data is depicted as points on the x and y axis, and sometimes those points are connected through lines. Plots are very useful for visualizing trends and patterns. When we say trends, we mean direction. So for example, the ice cream sale plot shown at the top here, we can see that as the temperature, which is shown on the x-axis, increases, 
so do the sales, the number of sales. So that is a trend showing a, a direction. Pattern is a, rep a repetition or something that you notice that repeats. For example, in the rainfall in Springfield plot shown here, the red line depicts rainfall in, in 1994 and the blue in 1993. We notice that in both plots, the rainfall decreases from July to August. If we had data for several more years, that would become a pattern because it repeats. The last type of bar graph is a histogram. Sorry, the last type of representation is a, is a histogram. I want to be clear, this is not a bar graph, although it looks like a bar graph. One quick way to tell that it's not a bar graph is that there is no spaces, there are no spaces between the bars. If you look at a bar graph, and let's just quickly go back to the bar graph, we'll see that there are spaces between the bars. Histograms do not have that feature. So what does a histogram show? It shows distribution. And the best example of that is um, point distribution on an exam. So it, a histogram is useful when you want to find the mean, which will be like the average, the median, which is the middle value, so the value um, between the highest and the low, the mode, which is the most common value. And in this histogram, the most common value uh, for, for points scored is between 50 and 60 because that's the highest bar. And also the range. So our scores go somewhere between from 0 to 100. Now that we looked at the common types of representation, we're going to move on to best practices. We're going to speak about how we analyze and how we interpret. Analysis will be shown in red and interpreting will be shown in blue. The first step in analyzing the data is to ground yourself in the context. So you want to begin by reading the title of the data so you know what the data is showing you and identifying which representation. Is it a bar graph, pie chart, table? By knowing the representation, you'll know how to read the data. Once you've grounded yourself, you're going to look for key features and that's going to depend on the type of representation. So for example, in a data table like this, I would uh, a key feature would be reading the headers on the columns or the rows. In plots and bar graphs, I would want to read the labels on the x and y axes. Another thing that's important to look at are the units that are used. Um, that's a very important detail. And when you have something like a plot, this is one small note, we won't go into it here, but the shape of the graph is also important for plots because that will let you know which function best represents that data. In this case, it's, these dots kind of look like a line, so I would say this is a linear function, and that could give me some really useful information later. The next thing we want to do is, after we have grounded ourselves and identified key features, is to start looking for trends, patterns, and any standout features. We've already talked about trends and patterns. So in the case for the ice cream sales, the trend we found was as the temperature increases, the number of sales increase, and that's a trend. And the pattern we found in the expenses by month is this person spent more money each month on rent than in any other expense. Standout features are, are changes or anomalies. What I mean by change, if we look at the ice cream sales, there's only a small increase um, in the number of sales in this region of the graph with temperature. However, when we get to this region, there's a huge jump in the number of sales with the temperature. So that will be a change. The slope of these of this region of the graph is different than the first region. Anomalies are things that are out of the ordinary. So if you look at the expenses by month, you'll notice that the food, the price for food, is about the same in January, February, and April. Only March the amount that was spent on food is much larger. It's almost double. Once you've finished analyzing the data, now it's time to figure out, well, what is the data telling you? You need your story. Some sentence starters for this will be this data suggest or according to this data. So in the case of ice cream sales, we would say that this data suggests that as the temperature increases, the number of sales increase. Another thing that we can add on to this is that the 
sales increased much more when the temperature was between 98 and 103 degrees. So it increased more quickly. In addition to figuring out the story that the data is telling you, you also need to know your strength, the strengths and limitations of the data. And that's going to depend on how you want to use the data. For example, if I wanted to use this ice cream sale data to order to figure out how much ice cream I should order for my store, I could say that on warm, warm days, I definitely need to order more ice cream because that's what this data is telling me since the number of sales increase with the temperature. However, I don't know if this data is collected, has been collected over days, weeks, months, years. So I may need to see more trials just to confirm that this is what I should do. Finally, if I'm ordering ice cream, I probably will have different flavors, and this data doesn't tell me which flavor is most popular on those days. So I'm, I will still need to do some more research. To quickly recap, we looked at the common representations of data, table, pie chart, bar graph, plots, and histograms. And then we went over best practices for analyzing and interpreting data. Starting with analyzing, which is making sense of the data, you want to ground yourself in the context by reading the title and identifying the type of representation. Then you will look for key information and features. Labels, assays, units, etc. are all key features that you will need to analyze the data. Finally, you want to make your observations. Look for patterns, trends, and anything that stands out. Once you've analyzed your data, you can make meaning of it by interpreting it. So what's the story this data is telling you? And you also want to know the strength and limitations of the data based on the purpose that you're using the data. I hope you have found this video helpful. Have a quality day.